Hey everybody, this is Gregory from Dapp University. Welcome back to this mini series where we're building a blockchain application with React.js. So in this video, we're gonna continue on with this to-do list application uh, that we were building in the previous uh, tutorials where we were basically taking a uh, to-do list from dappuniversity.com, uh, an article that I've written. Let's see here, this to-do list right here, this big blockchain application tutorial. Um, you know, I have a 90 minute tutorial where I show you how to build this blockchain application. And in this mini series, we're refactoring it to work with React.js. So uh, in this video, we're going to feature how to uh, add new tasks onto the blockchain with our to-do list. And we're also gonna refactor it so this loading status works. So check out the previous videos in this series if you haven't already. And all as always, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the like button down below. And you can download my courses for free on my website over here at dappuniversity.com forward slash free download. All right, so let's jump back into our application. Uh, we're gonna go to the source directory and go to the uh, app.js uh, file first. And inside of here, we're gonna do a little refactoring. Um, we're basically gonna take all of this um, and put it in its own component because we want to show this loader uh, conditionally. Like if the blockchain is actually loading, we want to show this loader. And if it's not, we want to show the content on the page. So let me show you how to do that. First, we want to keep track of the loading state of the page. All right. And we're going to do that with a state object. So first, I'll create a new key here called loading. And we'll set it to true by default. Okay. And then basically, um, whenever we finish loading on this blockchain data, we want to set loading to false. Okay. So that's going to come at the end of this load blockchain function. At the very end, we're going to say set state loading false. So basically, we want to check to see if the page is loading or not. Um, and if it is, we want to show this loader. And if it's not, we want to show all this original content from the page. So how do we do that? Well, you know, you might have seen older JavaScript implementations that use like a conditional that say like if, you know, loading, then, you know, show this section and if not, show this section all in one pl place. And we're basically going to do that. But what we want to do is take all this content right here that I just minimized and put it into a new component. See, right now we're in a React component called app.js. We basically want to create a new component called to-do list that'll, that'll contain you know, basically all of this code right here. We want to hide this code if it's loading. If it's not, we want to show this code. So let's do that. We'll create a new file. Um, a new file that's going to go right here called to do list.js. Okay. And I'm just going to copy all of this as a starting place, paste it in here. So we're going to, you know, I just duped all this code. Um, so I'm going to take out all this. Sorry, having a little trouble with my keyboard today. I'll take out all this. We're going to keep the render function. Um, we're going to take out this. We don't need the CSS. We don't need Web3 right now. Um, and I'm going to take out basically everything but this content. Okay. So I'll minimize this and do that. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to back this up. Okay. So now we have all the content we want to render out inside of here. And we're going to rename this component to to-do list instead of app. All right. Now um, we'll just import this here. Just make sure it still works. Import uh, to-do list from current directory to-do list. All right. Let's just see if we have any errors on the page. Okay. So no problems requiring that file. Okay. So now what we want to do is render out that content here. So let's just create the uh, to-do list here and just see what happens so that I can show you what that looks like whenever we refactor. All right, so we have a little bit of an issue. Um, it cannot read tasks of null. So what happened was we have some data in here that says this.state.tasks in our new component, but we haven't set up this.state.tasks. What we want to do is actually pass the task data down to this component. We can do that like this. We can say tasks equals, um, sorry, this.state.tasks. Okay. And inside of here, instead of saying state, we want to say props. 
Okay, so what is that? Well, props is an object that gets passed around into React components that basically allows you to pass in parameters to your components. And that's what we're doing here. We're basically saying, whatever parameters you passed in, give me the tasks, and we'll use that instead of state like we did in the previous uh, example. And that's how you do it. Okay, so see here. All right, that worked. So now let's clean this up. Let's you know show this loading uh, status if it's actually loading, and if not, we'll show the content on the page. So how do we check for loading? Well, we s keep track of loading with this dot state dot loading, um, and we can we can actually write code that checks for that inside of the component like this. We basically, just say we're gonna uh, execute JavaScript. So we need these curly braces. We'll say this dot state dot loading. What we're gonna do is basically have like a ternary operator where we say if it is, then you know uh, show loading, and if not, then we want to you know load con you know, to do list. All right, so this is just pseudo code. I'm not actually gonna call these functions, but that's what we want to do. So if we want to have um, show the loader, I'm just gonna refactor this to use one line. All right, and I'm gonna copy this and say, I'm gonna replace this here. All right, and then here, instead of loading, I'm gonna paste this in here. All right, so this is one big line, looks pretty ugly. Let's just see if it works though. All right, it worked. So you saw the loading over here. We probably need to update the styling, but um, we can refresh the page and see that if the app's loading, it hides the content, shows the loader, um, and then does this. Okay. So let's clean this up a little bit. I'm gonna show you how to format this ternary to use multiple lines. I'm gonna escape it like this. Um, sorry, not escape, I'm gonna go to a new line like that. Go to another new line like this. This is how I write these things sometimes inside of applications. Save that. See, that's a lot easier to read. We can just say this state lat loading, and we know it's a ternary because the uh, question mark starts with the new line, and then the colon, the fallback, uh, starts with the next line. Let's see if it works. All right, yep, still works. All right, so now let's. Um, make the form work. So we want to actually submit a new task to the blockchain. We'll need to wire this form up to talk to the blockchain. And we'll do that inside of this to-do list component. So inside of here, um, we basically want to make this form right here work, okay? And we have a little problem right now. We see, still see this submit button. Um, in the last tutorial where I actually you know, built this in just vanilla JavaScript, we hid this submit button just because we wanted a really simple to-do list. Uh, so we'll do that now. We'll just say hidden, and I'm gonna say true. See if that works. Okay, I didn't like that, sorry. Um, I actually need to put this inside of, let's see, the JSX, curly braces. Okay, cool. We've got this flash of content going on over here. I'm not 100% sure what's happening there, but we'll try to figure that out in a second. Okay, so that worked, the button's gone. Now let's actually wire the form up. So in order to do that, we need an on submit handler for this form, okay? And that is going to look like this. Well, basically, so I'm gonna break that up into multiple lines. I'm gonna say, hmm, let's do it like this. Let's say um, on submit. That's gonna be the on submit handler. And then we need to put some curly braces here. We're gonna pass a function in. It's gonna take an argument for this uh, callback function. Oops. That is going to be um, the event that's passed in. And then we'll say event prevent default. That basically prevents the default behavior of the form, which is to uh, change the page. We don't want that to happen. And we'll say this.props dot create task and we'll pass in this dot task dot value okay so we need to make this work <laughs> I'll show you this is going to require two steps first we need to actually get the value of the task that's the first step the second step is to get a function that actually calls this okay so the first step is to get 
tr- get the value of this form. We need to pull this out. And then we need to actually submit it to the blockchain. So to get the value, we need to wire up this input right here to keep track of that. We do that something called a ref inside of React, which looks like this. We say uh, input equals this dot task. We'll say input. So what happens is we're basically going to take this input value and save it to our component, and we're going to call it t- uh, task. And then inside this onSubmit handler, we're going to read it, this.task, which we set here, this.task, and this.task. And we're going to read out the value, okay? And we're going to pass that into a function create task, which we have not created yet, but we're going to. And that's going to actually talk to the blockchain. So let's create this function, this create task function. It's not going to be called inside of, it's not going to be defined inside of here. We're actually going to define it up a level where we have web3 in view, So we'll create that function like this and we'll, I'm just going to paste it in, right? And I'll show you how it works. Boom. So create task is going to work like this. It's going to accept the content of the task. And once we get that, we're going to make the app show is loading. And then we're going to say this.state.todo list, which we save from web three here and load blockchain data this state to-do list. Methods, create task, just like we saw here, methods, you know, task count. These were call methods, but we're actually gonna trigger a send method, which is going to uh, write data to the blockchain. So we're gonna say send uh, from this.state.account, which is the account we're using the app with, and we're gonna, we're gonna wait for it to finish. We're gonna say, uh, We're going to listen one time for the receipt to come back from the blockchain, which basically that's going to give us confidence that, you know, the tree, the transaction, uh, was, is, was received. And once that happens, we're going to set loading to false and we're going to reload the app. All right. So now that we've defined this create task function, we need to pass it down to this component so that this can call it. This is going to be a two step process. First, we need to go to our constructor and say uh, this dot create task equals this dot create task that bind this, and that is going to allow us to pass it in uh, to this uh, child component like this. Let's we'll say create task equals uh, this dot create task. All right, and now we can pass that into here. So that should be everything that we need in order to wire up the to-do list to the blockchain. So let me refresh this, see if there's any problems. See, unknown handler on submit. Oh, I had a spelling error here, sorry guys. Uh, On submit, all right. Okay, you can actually see I've got some new tasks on the to-do list. I created a couple of these in between the last video and now. Um, so also before we do this, you know, make sure you've got Ganache running so that we can uh, create tasks on the blockchain. And if you if you had to update Ganache, you're gonna have to change the smart contract address. Just to give you a heads up. So you need to make sure you've got one of the accounts from Ganache loaded into your MetaMask uh, wallet. You might need to reset your account uh, if you have any issues on this step. You can just go to settings. Uh, reset account if you run into errors. But let's just try this. Let's say task number three. I'll enter. All right, sign the transaction. And looks like it worked. Refresh. Awesome. Boom, task number three is created. All right, guys. Uh, well, that's all I got for this video today. Um, in the next video, we will wire up the check boxes on the to-do list to actually toggle the task completion on the blockchain, and we'll put them in a completed to-do list down at the bottom. So, hope y'all like this video. Again, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, 
And as always, you can download my courses for free on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash free download. So again, I hope you all liked the video. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.